Okay, so we'll go through, we'll talk through the types of vessels um, in a little bit more detail now. What did we say about arteries? We said that arteries are elastic and they're muscular. Because they're so muscular, we can say that they're contractile. Okay, all of that muscle gives them the ability to really contract and relax a lot. The elastic fibers give them that elasticity. Okay, and these are these both affect the size of the vessel, but in very different ways, either passively or actively. So the elasticity is important because it allows the arteries to stretch and constrict passively. Right? They don't have to use ATP, they don't use energy, or this isn't like an intentional thing. They expand and constrict passively due to changes in blood pressure. Okay, and this is super important when you look at where the arteries are. When we look at the heart, um, what type of vessels carry blood away from the heart? Arteries go away. Um, where does all of the force come from that's gonna generate this blood pressure? The ventricle, the heart, right? All of that force and pressure comes from the heart. So the heart contracts, right? The ventricles generate all this pressure and they cram a bunch of blood into this vessel under really high pressure. So this vessel has to deal with super high pressures. As the blood flows through the system, it loses that pressure, right? It loses some steam. It's like if I kick a ball really hard right here, it's gonna come out super fast right now and it's gonna lose steam as it goes, right? And by the time it gets to the other side of the parking lot, there's not much left. That's how the blood flow is. So these arteries, these vessels that are closest to the heart, have to be able to withstand large pressure changes. So when the heart contracts and we cram all that blood into them really fast, they have to be able to stretch passively, right? And then when there's not so much pressure, they shrink back down. So every time the heart beats, these vessels do this number. They stretch and then they relax again. Stretch and then they relax back down. Passively, just because of the pressure changes. Um, we'll see that this is also important as far as keeping the blood moving forward. Okay, this protects the vessel so that the vessel doesn't get damaged from all that pressure, um, but it also does keep the, the blood moving forward. Okay, that's called pulse force. We'll talk about it in a second. The contractility of the arteries um, is when they change diameter actively. Okay, so this is not a passive just stretching because of increased pressure. This is when the art, the, um, the vessel purposefully either contracts or relaxes okay, in order to adjust blood pressure or blood flow. Um, it does this primarily because of the sympathetic <laughs> nervous system. Okay, so remember the sympathetic nervous system is our epi and norepi and our fight or flight. Um, and we'll see that, that these, uh, the sympathetic division is gonna control the contractility of the vessels that'll cause that vasoconstriction. Um, and again, we'll see that that adjusts blood pressure and blood flow. So we mentioned this already, but vasoconstriction occurs when we contract the smooth muscle. And what happens to the vessel diameter when that smooth muscle contracts during vasoconstriction? Decreases, right? The diameter decreases or gets smaller. Vasodilation is the opposite. So when the smooth muscle that goes around the vessel um, relaxes, that's dilation, the vessel is dilating. What happens to the diameter when it dilates? It increases. Again, veins have the ability to, um, to contract and relax as well, but it's not as pronounced because they don't have as much uh, muscle. So all arteries are not equal, okay? All arteries are not the same. Um, we have different types of arteries and the arteries kind of change as we leave the heart and as we progress out into the periphery. Um, as we look at the arteries, we see that the arteries will progress from elastic arteries to muscular arteries to arterioles, which remember we said are the smallest little arteries that we have. So when we look at the heart, the initial arteries here that take blood away from the heart are going to be elastic arteries. Or sometimes we call them conducting arteries because they conduct large volumes of blood like to the different regions. 
Um, but we'll, we'll call them elastic arteries in here because they are more elastic than the other arteries. So they have more elastic fibers and fewer smooth muscle cells. They're very, very stretchy and elastic. The elastic arteries are the largest diameter vessels, which again are the ones that are closest to the heart, right? So close to the heart. So these are things like the pulmonary trunk, right? The pulmonary trunk that's gonna take blood um, out from the, this comes down to the right, vent, the right ventricle, and then the aorta, right? Which is taking blood out of the left ventricle and going down the thoracic cavity and the abdomen. Okay, these are classic elastic arteries. Again, I said that the difference here is that there are many elastic fibers and fewer smooth muscle cells. So these, um, these vessels have the ability to, to stretch and constrict passively really easily as the pressure changes in them. Again, that's important because they're so close to the heart. Um, and I mentioned before that that protects them. It allows them to withstand pressure changes. Um, think about clothing, right? If I have a waistband that's not elastic and I yank on it, what am I gonna do to the button? I have, I button my pants and I yank on them. What happens to the button? Pops, right? I break it. If I have an elastic waistband and I yank on it, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Fun, right? So that's the same theory with these vessels. <clears throat> the heart contracts and we jam a bunch of blood into them. They stretch. When the heart relaxes and that pressure is not pushing them forward anymore, or not pushing blood into them anymore, they relax, and that's it. It's fine. Okay. When we damage those elastic fibers, we see that we damage these vessels. So the elasticity is very important to them. Also, that elasticity evens out something called the pulse force. Okay. And what this does is this keeps the blood moving forward. Because think about it, right? You have you've got your heart here, right? And you've got these big vessels that are bringing blood out to the body. The heart contracts, right? And the blood gets pushed out here into this vessel. Then the heart relaxes. You think your blood does this? Flow, stop. Flow, stop. Flow, stop. Does your heart do that, or does your blood do that for your vessels? No. Do you see them get bigger and then smaller, bigger and smaller, big? No, your blood flows constantly, right? It's a nice, smooth flow. The reason for that is because of the elasticity of these vessels. When your heart contracts, that pushes a bunch of blood forward and they get bigger, right? They stretch. So they're like, say, out here. The blood's moving forward because the heart contracted. Then when the heart relaxes and there's not all that pressure, these snap back to their original position. As they snap in, they push the blood forward. So there's always something pushing the blood forward. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so we say that that evens out the pulse force. The heart is pushing during one part, during systole, and then as the vessel recoils, that pushes the blood forward. There's always something keeping it moving. So we started out with elastic arteries, okay, like the aorta, um, like the pulmonary trunk. These are super stretchy vessels that passively expand and constrict that are really close to the heart. Um, the most common artery that we have is going to be a muscular artery. The muscular arteries are these kind of like medium sized arteries. They branch off of the elastic arteries and then go out into all different areas of the body. We also call them distribution arteries because they distribute the blood to essentially every organ and muscle. Okay, so they'll go out, they'll branch, and they'll make sure that we have blood supply going to every muscle, every area of every muscle, every organ. Uh, and that the blood's getting distributed all over the body. Again, I said that they're medium sized and that these are the most common arteries that we have. Again, the difference between elastic arteries and muscular arteries is very self-explanatory. When we look at the tunica media, elastic arteries have more elastic fibers, muscular arteries have more muscle. That's it. 
Okay, so they're more muscular. Um, you can imagine that this means they have more pronounced vasoconstriction and dilation. Remember, when we tell the vessels, when we purposely, actively tell the vessels to constrict or dilate, we're telling these muscle cells in the tunica media to contract and relax, right? So the more muscle cells you have, the more you're gonna contract or relax, depending on what we're telling them to do. So these muscular arteries have very, very pronounced vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So they're gonna be super important when we start to look at blood pressure um, and if we're increasing or decreasing the blood pressure. So arteries carry blood where? Away from the heart. The first arteries we get to are called what? Elastic arteries. They even out the what? Pulse pores. What's an example of an elastic artery? The pulmonary trunk, the aorta. What comes after the elastic arteries? Muscular arteries. They have more what? Muscles. So they do what? Constrict and dilate. Um, after the muscular arteries, we get to our smallest arteries that are called what? Arterial. Arterials. Okay, arterials again are the smallest arteries. Um, they have little or no tunica externa, so they've lost that outer membrane or that outer layer. Um, and the tunica media is sparse. Okay, the tunica media can have like a couple concentric layers of muscle or it might be patchy. You might see a little area here and then like nothing, little area here and then nothing. Okay, so they're getting very, very thin as we progress down towards the capillaries. We're losing these outer layers and we're starting to get down towards just a tunica enema. Um, <clears throat> arterial diameter can change according to the sympathetic nervous system, okay, just like the rest of the arteries, right? Epinephrine and norepinephrine can tell the arterioles to constrict and to dilate, but they're also controlled locally, okay? And this is different. Um, they can change, the diameter can change according to local conditions. Um, and this very, or this, this drastically affects the resistance of the vessel, so it's really important for controlling blood flow, like where in the tissue the blood is actually going to go. So for example, like say I have, um, here's my arterial, this way, I've got arterial going this way, and so I've got tissue, right? All these cells and all this tissue over here and over here. So these cells that are present here in this tissue can control this arterial, local control. We don't need the brain, we don't need an uh, endocrine organ to release hormones, it's controlled locally. So for example, if this area here had low oxygen, it needs more oxygen. So it can release little um, like local hormones, local vasodilators, and they can tell this arterial to dilate. If this arterial dilates, what does that mean? It gets bigger or smaller? Yeah. Bigger, right? So now it's this big. If it's bigger, there's less resistance, right? It's easier for that blood to flow. So we have an increased blood flow to bring more oxygen to the area. The opposite's also true. Right? If this vessel were to constrict or get smaller, there would be more resistance. Right? It would be harder for the blood to flow and we would decrease blood flow. The point here is that these arterials are um, controlled locally. Okay? There's local control for them. That's special. That's different than the larger arteries. Um, we call these arterials resistance vessels. Later on, we'll see that diameter has a huge impact on resistance right? to control blood flow. So as we change the diameter of these vessels really um, frequently with this local control, we change the resistance really frequently. Um, so we call them resistance vessels. Again, they're super, super important in regulating blood flow. So the muscular arteries were really important in regulating blood pressure. The arterioles are really important in regulating blood flow, where the blood actually goes. Arteries are muscular and what? Elastic. elastic. That elasticity is super important, right? Just like your waistband. If it's not elastic and you yank on it, you're gonna break it, 
If it is elastic and you yank on it, it stretches, no worries. Or threes are the same way. So if there's a problem with the elastic fibers, if you have an area in the artery where the elastic, you don't have enough elastic fibers or there's damage to the elastic fibers for some reason, it causes a weak spot in that part of the artery. Okay, and it can start to bulge because of the pressure. Right? It doesn't stretch there anymore, so the pressure starts to push the wall out and you get a little bulge. That can burst um, or rupture, like you've heard of like an aneurysm. Okay? An aneurysm is that bulge in an artery wall. And if it ruptures, you start to lose a lot of blood because arteries, remember, are high pressure. They're carrying blood away from the heart under high pressure. So if you break one of them, you're pushing the blood out really, really rapidly. Um, the most dangerous places to get an aneurysm would be obviously the aorta or in the brain. Um, if we get it in the aorta, why would that be a problem if we rupture an aneurysm in the aorta? You're not bringing blood anywhere, right? The aorta leads to everywhere else. So if it ruptures, you're not adequately delivering blood anywhere. Why else would the aorta be a big problem? Big diameter, what else? High pressure, right? It's right next to the heart, super pressurized. So the higher the pressure, the more blood you're gonna cram out, okay? So you lose blood really, really rapidly. Um, and that's, I mean, it's, it's deadly. You don't come back from that. Um, if you have a ruptured aneurysm in the brain, you end up with a hemorrhagic stroke. Right, I think we talked about that in neuro. Um, like if you have vessels that are bringing blood to this section of the brain, if I rupture an aneurysm here, now this blood is leaking out, right? It's not getting delivered over here anymore. Mm -hmm. So these, this area of the brain is being deprived of oxygen. It's being deprived of blood flow. So that's a stroke. It's hemorrhagic because we had a hemorrhage that caused it. There's a bleed that caused it. Um, what kind of stroke is it when it's caused by a clot? Good job, thrombotic stroke, a clot of thrombus. Um, so if a clot breaks off and it starts flowing through the vessels and then it gets to a tiny vessel and it gets lodged and blocks it, now this area is not getting any blood, right? So that's a thrombotic stroke that's caused by a, thr caused by a thrombus as opposed to being caused by a hemorrhage, um, which would be a ruptured aneurysm. Incredibly important to tell the difference between the two, right? I don't know if we talked about this when we talked about blood clotting. Do we talk about this? Yeah? Okay. All right. So, so far we've gone through this, right? We leave the heart and you go into what kind of arteries? Elastic. They're super elastic. After the elastic arteries, we get to muscular arteries. They're really, really muscular. After the muscular arteries, we get to the arterioles. They're tiny, right? We've lost the tunica externa. The tunica media is very sparse. There's not much left. They're very, very little vessels. That's going to bring us to capillaries. My point is that in putting this picture up is that it is not this nice and pretty. There is not one single point in the body where you say, okay, right here, I go from an elastic artery to a muscular artery. All of a sudden, the elastic fibers appear, the muscle comes in, and bam, that's the spot. It's a slow progression, right? There's all these gray areas. And the reason for that is as the pressure decreases, the elastic fibers slowly disappear, and the muscular muscle cells start coming in. Okay, so it slowly goes from one to the next. It nicely melts in from one to the next. Same thing, as the muscular arteries go into the arterioles. You start to see them get smaller and smaller. The tunica externa slowly disappears. Okay, so there's not one part where I can tell you exactly at this point it changes. It's just a slow progression. Okay, we like to create these nice little categories because they're easier to learn, um, but in reality, it's not so clear cut. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that's it for arteries.